Oh boy, here we go. Disclaimer, everything said in this video is for the purposes of entertainment and satire. I am not a lawyer. None of the opinions expressed are meant to be taken as serious legal advice or argument. Any reference to illegal actions are entirely hypothetical. Piracy is amazing, and you should do Ugh. it in real life as much as possible. This is not a joke. Go out and pirate something right now. Oh boy. All right, I've probably lost some of you already with uh -huh. the title of this video yeah, and that me. opening bit. Piracy, especially as it relates to video games, has become a very complicated topic. Perhaps even the most complicated topic, since it simultaneously deals with legality, morality, and ethics. Which, I don't know if you knew, people tend to have pretty extreme opinions about. A lot of big companies and people online villainize piracy and make it out to be much worse than I think it actually is. Sometimes straight up lying. I'm about really it, curious. The people who do it. I'm so really thought, curious to know what this argument's gonna be. It would be fun to go through a bit of a defense of piracy and try to debunk a lot of these myths. My patrons also voted for me to make this video, so if I go to jail for this, I'm blaming you. To give a quick definition, piracy is any act of robbery or criminal violence by a ship or its crew upon another ship or. Wait, no, that's not it. Piracy is broadly defined as the unauthorized copying or distribution of copyrighted works. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are quick to say it's theft, including Joe Biden back in 2011. And that's definitely how anti-piracy groups would like you to see it. In fact, they started an ad campaign in the 80s that invented the term piracy is theft in an attempt to villainize copying software. But I just want to start okay. by clearing this up. Piracy is just copyright infringement. They are synonymous. When you do a piracy, the only law being broken is copyright. There is no theft. Isn't isn't this just semantics though? Because it because then wouldn't it actually be th theft in practice? Like the actual effects of it are 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 the same as theft? No. Don't copy okay. That or floppy. stealing. Involved. Okay. Let me explain. If I yo Davy, thank you so much for the bits. Thank you. Rob a GameStop, they actively lose out on all the copies of or spoken that I might take from them. Okay. Those copies might not be worth a lot because I don't think anyone bought that game, but GameStop doesn't have them anymore, which is what makes it theft. But even if I make one trillion copies of Big Mother Truckers 2 Truck Me Harder, real game by the way, and give them to all my friends, the developers didn't lose a thing. They I mean, that's not true though. I, I I guess it depends on if you count potential as being as being a thing. You know what I mean? If you count if you count potential as being a thing. Right? So I mean I mean let's just I mean just just strictly saying like there wouldn't be a game industry if you could buy one copy of the game and literally distribute it to everybody. Do you see what I'm saying? So I mean like like I, uh, yo, Seven, thanks for the follow. So wait, Julio, like, just let me, let me understand for a second. So do you think it's okay if there's a company, right, that sells a video game and then you get one copy of that game and you give it to literally everyone else? Like, let's just assume the worst case scenario. Like, do you think that's okay? And now the game company can't make more games because they only made, what, 20 bucks off of it? And so the company shuts down. You're saying it's not theft because they're not. Okay. I mean, I feel like this is semantics copies, though. Nothing was taken. No theft occurred. And this is backed by the U.S. government ever since Dowling v. United States in 1985, where they agreed that interference with copyright, a.k.a. piracy, does not easily equate with theft, conversion, or Okay, fraud. so by law, by law, it's not, is the argument. The infringer of a copyright does not assume physical control over the copyright, nor wholly deprive its owner of its use. Also, a lot of people love misusing the term piracy to just describe any time they think people owe them money. Adblock, for example, has nothing to do with copyright. Watching this video and blocking all the ads isn't even related to distribution or copying. And there's no law saying that you have to watch ads on videos. So when companies like German media conglomerate Axel Springer try Yeah, I mean I don't I don't I don't think it's the same. By suing ad blockers for piracy, they always lose in court. This should be Yeah, the end result is is similar. Yeah, it's, it's just like a semantic argument. That's what I'm obvious, saying. Obvious, but just because you want more money from people doesn't mean they're pirating from you. Not making someone more money. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's the same though. Isn't a crime. 
Otherwise, I could say that this video is sponsored by Gamersups and then have you arrested if you don't buy something from them, because I could have potentially made a sale from every person that watches this video. Uh, anyway, this video is sponsored by Gamersups, a zero calorie energy drink formula that's tastier and cheaper than canned energy drinks. Wow. If you don't go to gamersups.gg slash Wait, there's an anime girl thigh flavor of Gamersups? Gamersups.gg What's this code again? Lex Lex Torius? Leaflet GG sponsor when. Wait, it's not on here. I I, I don't see it. Whoa, TV milk, there's a TV milk flavor. What the fuck? What is this? right now and save 10% off on your next door. Is that a business expense? That's a business expense, right? Yeah. That's a business expense, right? We're going to try it. We're just going to try it. Yeah. Order. I will have you sent to prison where you belong, you piece of shit. So if piracy isn't stealing because you're not taking anything, then what actually is it and why is it illegal? Well, you see, the whole point of copyright is that you have exclusive rights to the things you make. If I write a story, I don't just own the pages I wrote on, but the words on the page too. And I have full legal control over now who has access to those lead. words. All piracy is, is someone getting around that access, doing something that the law says only I'm allowed to do. Mm -hmm. So if you buy my story, take it home and write it down word for word, you're violating my copyright. If it's an okay. ebook that you transfer onto a thumb drive, then give that to a friend, you're committing a crime. You know, there's the actually says you need my permission to do any There's like actually one case where I, I, I actually don't think it's a problem. Like, do, do you guys know about the whole backups thing and the, like how that was like a big issue where if you make a backup of like a program that you already purchased, that like that, that backup is like illegal, but like you might need it, right? Because if you, if the other one, like, you know, something happens to it, right? I think it was like the whole thing with like emulators. Any of that, even if you do it, oh, is that like I think technically, I think technically, if you own the game, you can emulate it, right? Am I am I am I right? Uh, if you if you own a game, tech technically by law, you can emulate it. Yeah. After I'm dead. To put it plainly, the World Intellectual Property Organization, the leading international pro copyright group says copyrights may more narrowly be viewed as limited and legally sanctioned monopolies. And if that's what the people advocating for it say, you can only imagine what the people who are against copyright might call it. Because yes, there are tons of different groups over the years that have fought for the abolition or reworking of copyright laws, mm -hmm. such as various pirate parties around the world or the hilariously named copy left movement. And I don't want to get too deep into any of that. I just want to highlight how contentious copyright laws are in general. They aren't the end-all be-all of dictating what's right and wrong. Though, to give a fun example of copyright Dude, this guy's a, action, uh, in yo, yo, this guy's, this guy's setup is mad comfy, isn't it? I kind of like it. You know, dude, I can, like, sit right next to him, dude. Like, right here. It's like we're just having a good time on the couch. This is great. Six, the Dutch musician Melchior Reitveld granted use of his song for a short film in a film festival. They allowed that song to be used for free for this one-off performance. However, Reitveld later found out that the short film had been put on thousands of DVDs without his permission, uh -oh. which he didn't get paid for. Reitveld then sued the filmmakers for copyright infringement and won, getting all 100,000 euros that those DVDs would have been worth. Why am I using this example specifically? Well, because the short film in question was an anti-piracy ad. The internet was actually convinced that it was the you wouldn't steal a car ad that everybody loves. Though while that ad has its own problems, it is completely different to the one that ironically committed piracy. But, oh, what the heck, here's a clip.
god. Wait, so what? Good. Wait, what is the word? <laughs> Hold up. Dude, that dude, that went like that went to like 12 like instantly. What the fuck? It is completely different to the one that ironically committed piracy. But oh, what the heck? Here's a clip. That's from a British comic. Dude, that went so quick. Dude, that went so quick. God, it My is so God. good. My favorite part is that it has to remind you that stealing is against the law. I don't know why they had to add that, but it's a banger. And according to some sources, it increased rates of piracy because of how cool it made it look. <laughs> There's a great report about the ineffectiveness of anti piracy They're like, damn, I'm a little, damn I'm a little, I look like a hacker. I'm gonna look like a super hacker. Piracy ads in general that I read that made the amazing point that pirates would often cut these ads out of films. So the only people who would watch them were paying customers, which effectively oh my made the advertisements for piracy. Piracy. Look, super mega rock and roll gods and superstars are just regular dudes like you guys. We punch the clock, we put on the pants, and then we blow people's minds. That's how we make a living. And then these pirates come and they steal all our internets. I don't know how they do it. These pirates can bust into our the internet, make us walk the plank, steal our rocking tunes, and leave us broke. Is that what you want, Mr. Long John Silver? What's your parrot gonna listen to when you go toe to toe against the English Armada? Jazz? I don't think so. Now, piracy is illegal in the US, and due to things like the Bernay Convention, also illegal in many places allied with the US. Though, just like with anti piracy ads, the law never really stopped anybody. Also, piracy laws either don't exist or straight up aren't enforced in a ton of places, especially China and Russia. So, a lot of companies took the task of stopping pirates into their own hands. I mean, if you can't arrest someone for obtaining copies, why not try to make it impossible to copy something to begin with? Mm -hmm. Before the switch from analog to digital, the way companies would stop you from duplicating your favorite VHS copy of Turner and Hooch was just making it so the output was scrambled if you tried to turn the VCR to record mode. But with computers came programming, and with programming came more advanced kinds of copy prevention, all of which are dubbed Digital Rights Management Software, or DRM. And I should clarify, to call any of this copy prevention is a bit of a stretch. It's more like copy delaying or copy mild inconvenience in most cases. You, you, you know what's kind of sad though is um like back in the day, like the pirated stuff was so cool. You know, like like you would turn it on and it would play like a sick song. And you know what I'm talking about? Like it would it would just play this really sick like chiptune song and be like, damn, what a fucking banger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because after all, one of the main reasons people get into programming in the first place is to problem solve fun challenges with computers. And so, as it turns out, giving a bunch of computer nerds a fat, juicy challenge to solve that would also let them play games for free if they beat it meant they would dedicate their lives to solving these problems. Getting around DRM became a very- I, won I wonder how many hackers the anti-piracy thing has created, you know? You know, Javier Millet, what about them? Even in the early days of computers, back in the era of the Apple II and the Commodore 64, they formed circles called wares groups that would trade games. Yeah, that's the one, wares, where, they would, they would play like this, the, they would play like really sick music, software, you know? Each of them rushing to be the first one to bypass a new gamer program to get all the fame that came with it. Almost always signing their name on fancy splash screens they made. Dude, they looked so cool. They looked so cool. Let's play their achievement. These crackers. And it was like cracked and they would always use like a Z. Hold on, can I say that word? These white people kept up this tradition. Oh my God! Into this very day, with the NFO files packed alongside what a legend. games, which are usually the only ways that wares groups will communicate with the outside world. And while the groups individually would rise and fall and fade into obscurity, the scene itself is surprisingly still going strong. Strong enough that in 1998, the U.S. would create the DMCA Act, which is most famously oh, known for protecting websites. Oh, my favorite! Like oh, my favorite DMCA! My favorite. 
I love getting DMCA'd by people that don't actually own the copyright. Do you guys know, like, once our YouTube channel started, like, to get a little bit bigger, we started to get people DMCAing us over shit that they don't even own. It's so fucking annoying. YouTube from copyright lawsuits, so long as they provide a way for the website to take down copyrighted Ugh. material. But they also made it specifically illegal to try and circumvent copy prevention systems. This had the intended effect of allowing anti-piracy groups to go after the wear scene and various crackers much harder than before, but had the unintended effect of making it illegal for people to fix everything from John Deere tractors to their own pacemakers because in doing so you had to mess with the copy prevention software. Boy, oh my United God. States law sure is great, huh? I think that internet swapping and trading of different things is pretty cool, man. Kids want to listen to music, you know? I don't think bands should be so concerned with making every penny that should be squeezed out of everything. It's like, I want, I want kids in Thailand to rock out when we show up to Thailand, you know? I don't care if they bought the record or not. They download it off their computer right on. If they taped it off of their friend right on. It means they like music. Piracy as a whole then got a ton of notoriety around 1999 when a little website called Napster came out and dropped a fucking nuke on the music Holy fuck, dude, the Napster era. ...industry that it would never quite get over. So anti-piracy groups in the years following, as well as the companies making DRM, massively stepped up their game. One of the first big attempts... You know, though, I will admit, though, I, I, I think this is true. I think a lot of piracy arises from not actually people not being able to afford things. Like, I definitely think that there are people that, that, can't, that can't afford things, that pirate. But I think a lot of it is just from people making things terrible, making it terrible to actually buy things. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so much easier, right? Like to, to hop on one of those programs and just download music than it is to like go to the store and buy like an entire CD for one song that you want, you know? It's a service issue, yeah, probably. At impossible to crack DRM was Star Force, which managed to keep Splinter Cell Chaos Theory unpirated for a world record 422 days. Damn. But Star Force also, unfortunately, required full control over your entire PC, couldn't be uninstalled, and ran so poorly that tech websites claimed it would break your CD drive, which caused Ubisoft to be on the receiving end of a $5 million class action lawsuit for Fuck. using it and later caused them to drop it entirely. The software to replace Star Force was then SecureROM, which would physically measure where data was on your disk and then authenticate that data by making you activate your copy on an online server. And this was used on everything from Mass Effect to Bioshock. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, a lot of companies now they're they're using systems where you have to, uh, just using systems where, like for instance, uh, Spotify, where you just can listen to it anywhere, but it's like within their own system and people get paid uh, from it. ...to GTA 4 with some pretty okay results. Like super convenient, However, you know? in order to work, it also, for some reason, required access to everything on your computer, also couldn't be uninstalled, would shut the game off if you ran any other programs, and would sometimes make you reactivate your copy as often as every 10 days which landed EA with multiple lawsuits this time after they included it in the release of Spore. And the cherry on top of all this, Spore went on to become the most pirated game of all time in 2008. Oh, man. And there's a good chance it only got there because of how many people hated the DRM. Now, when I tell you that the next and most famous DRM software to come out, Denuvo, was made by the same people who made SecureROM, you should start to see a pattern here. Denuvo is the most sophisticated copy prevention we've seen so far. And by most sophisticated, I mean it took Wares Groups a whole month to crack games like The Dragon problem is that they don't even really fix the problem, right? They don't, the, the kernel level anti cheats, like there's still people cheating in games that have kernel level anti cheats. Uh, and I mean, but the thing is, is like you kind of need that to even begin having an anti cheat. Inquisition instead of the typical day. It then took eight months to crack Rise of the Tomb Raider after Denuvo rewrote their whole program from the ground up. Uh, and then Hitman 2 got cracked several days before launch. So yeah. <laughs> the way it works is obviously hush hush, but the basic gist from what I've heard is that like SecureROM, it connects to servers to validate your game files. 
but instead of checking physical data on a disk, it makes a unique key for every computer it's installed on, then keeps the game's code encrypted and only decrypts it on the fly as long as that key remains mm. valid. If that sounds insane to you, it should, because Denuvo has been proven to cause performance issues and slower load times in games that use it, since sometimes it just can't decrypt that data fast enough. Just to name a few examples, Devil May Cry 5 saw a 25% performance increase, Ouch. and Resident Evil Village got rid of major stuttering issues after Capcom removed Denuvo from the games. And Tekken 7 director Denuvo may die. directly blamed Denuvo for the game having bad performance at launch. The worst part of all this, to me, is that just like how people who bought movies legally were the only ones who saw anti-piracy ads, people who buy games legally often get worse performance than they would from a pirated copy because of the DRM. So it's become Yikes. a widespread practice for companies to remove Denuvo from their games the second it gets cracked, which leads to this absurdly hilarious situation where a game will come out, have performance issues, and the community has to wait for pirates to crack it so that Denuvo <laughs> can be removed to clear the issues up. Oh my now, god. Now, to clarify, Denuvo still massively increases the average time it takes to Does crack it, Is this thing still around? Your game. The Denuvo? Sometimes giving up the goods instantly, but sometimes giving about a month before something gets pirated, maybe even a year if the game isn't popular enough to attract the few crackers who know how to break it. And the crackers themselves have had some pretty it big is, ups dang. and downs the last several years or so, with many groups disbanding or getting raided by the police, and a ton of drama happening between members. This video doesn't Do really focus that much on, on them, but I'll link to a great Reddit. As of a few months ago. Oh shoot. I mean, the Switch already runs like shit, so... ...thread that details a basic history of the scene, and a lot of the drama that went on around one particular cracker, Empress. And I also suggest reading the Wikipedia article that just lists all the wares groups, because that's pretty fun too. Ultimately, despite how terrible and ineffective it is for a lot of games, publishers keep putting in Denuvo and DRM in general because it can hopefully keep their game locked up long enough to survive the initial sales window. They are terrified of piracy and are often willing to hurt the consumer in order to just delay the inevitable. So let's talk a little bit about why they're so afraid. I hear okay. terrible things about piracy. I've been hearing them for decades. People love to say that piracy is causing the Isn't this the, the wait wait is isn't this only takes hackers a couple hours to crack Isn't it. this the the game dev guy that's been around for a while? I think I've seen his videos. Oh, he's so the original fall guy. And undermining everything. I listen. I don't see a lot of evidence for that, but what happens is if you make a game that runs slower or takes longer to start up or whatever it will, will become unplayable if someone loses a piece of paper, you're going to drive valid consumers away from your... So it doesn't... Okay, so it doesn't seem like the problem is having a sentiment against piracy. The problem is that adding anti-piracy measures just makes it a worse experience. Product. Whether they buy it or not, or whether they pirate it or not. Like, it doesn't say that piracy is good. Like, none of this is saying that piracy is a good thing. It's just saying that the anti-piracy measures are actually negative to everybody. They're not going to buy it. Because once a, someone pirates and they have wiped those measures, if the game's better because of it, if it runs faster, has a better frame rate, doesn't pause occasionally, starts up really fast... Why would you want to play the valid one? Piracy's effect on sales is incredible. See, the problem is, though, is like if this actually becomes like a real problem, it's going to turn into like all games being like a like a on demand sort of a service, kind of like. Kind of like Netflix or something, and I'm like really worried about that being like the actual future. Incredibly difficult to track. The intuitive answer is that it certainly should have some but how big of an effect and how much would change if piracy didn't exist is near impossible to find conclusive evidence on. Don't get me wrong, if you want to find studies on piracy, you can find hundreds, and I have. There are more research papers on the effects of piracy than I could count. But that's the problem, because they all contradict each other. Like, if I wanted to, I could show you a report from the European Commission in 2013 
that showed that music piracy had zero effect on legal music sales, mm -hmm. saying the vast majority of music that is consumed illegally by the individuals in our sample would not have been legally purchased if illegal downloading websites were not available to them. I could show you another report. That but like even, okay, so this is just talking about the effects of it. It doesn't make it like morally right. You know what I mean? It said even though 51% of all adults in the EU had pirated something at some point in their life, this had no negative effect on sales in most industries. And in the case of video games, actually led to a 24% increase in sales, likely from word of mouth and people buying games after they pirate them. A conclusion that several other reports I found also show for video games and other industries. But I could also show you reports that conclude the exact opposite. Ones that say piracy negatively impacts music sales or movie sales or game sales. Some saying it doesn't have an effect on one, but a strong effect on another. If you gather enough reports on this, many of them will say completely different things because they're all using different data and mm -hmm. methodologies. So just like I picked out studies showing piracy to have a positive effect, you can easily group up studies with negative effects and then make a conclusion from that. You know, piracy definitely hurts sales. Here are a dozen studies that say so. Just ignore the ones that disagree with me. Another thing to point out is that the vast majority of these- I mean, it's a problem with like basically any sort of research, right? Because like the the data data is going to be different. You don't know if people are poisoning the data with like uh, biased, biased, uh, you know, like cherry pick data or something like that. So it, it's really difficult when there's a lot of a uh, lot of data going out there. Studies can only ever prove correlation. They'll show that piracy went up some percentage and sales in some industry went down some percentage and then just say that as piracy. Yeah, you don't know it's funny the research exactly it goes up sales go down which is fine data to collect in a vacuum, but there's a reason that they all say research suggests that piracy may impact sales. Because I can show you a graph of beef jerky sales in the US and a graph of consensual incest in the US and say that beef jerky sales Let's are go. correlated with incest. <laughs> but I can't then say eating beef jerky makes you wanna kiss your cousin, no matter how much we all know it to be true. Correlation doesn't mean causation. Correlation doesn't even really prove anything on its own. And even mm -hmm. the very thorough 300 page piracy studies I showed you will cite other factors that may be responsible. Since there's so many variables, you can't make a conclusion for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's it's just true. something to keep in mind. When, when the web started, I used to get really grumpy with people uh, because they put my poems up, they put my story. Neil Gaiman, isn't this the guy who wrote uh, American Gods? Is that this guy? Or is up. I think I took a class from this guy. And I also got very grumpy because I felt like they were pirating my stuff, that it was bad. And then I started. Yeah, I did. I took a class from this guy. To notice that places where on I writing was being pirated, I was selling more and more books. People were discovering me through being pirated, and I started to realize that actually you're not losing books. You're not losing sales. You can't look on that as a lost sale. It's not a lost sale. Nobody who would have bought your book is not buying it because they can find it for free. What you're actually doing is advertising. You're reaching more people. You're raising awareness and understanding that. Well, I mean, the problem with this, right, is it, it, it depends, right? I mean, maybe... Maybe at certain ratios, it's fine. But again, like I can go back to the same same thing I said earlier. Like, what if what if one person bought one copy and then literally everybody else copied that cop copied that one copy, right? So it's like it might not apply to everybody. You know, the same thing that he's talking about gave me a whole new idea of the shape of of copyright and of what the web was doing because the biggest thing the web is doing is allowing people to hear things, allowing people to read things, allowing people to see things they might never have otherwise seen. And I think basically that's an incredibly good thing. But regardless of actual impact, the perceived impact of piracy on game sales is- What I'm saying, I, I, well, I, I, use, I use an extreme example to, to say that basically- so piracy affects short-term sales, but benefits long-term growth. I see. Well, I, I, listen, the reason I gave an, a ridiculous hypothetical is because 
it's it's going to be different depending on the situation, right? Is very, very negative. Companies are quick to bring up piracy as a contributor to bad sales performance, and there's a reason so many do a deal with the devil that is DRM. Crytek, the company behind Crisis and a favorite. Far Cry, even cited piracy as the main reason they stopped selling games exclusively on PC. According to the CEO, they somehow tracked how many people registered the game online and estimated that for every copy bought, 15 to 20 had been installed. Meaning, assuming the numbers are accurate, if even 10% of the pirates had bought the game, they would have doubled their revenue. However, even with that insane rate of piracy, the game made its production costs back, funded three more sequels, and became- It almost, it almost seems like the only way you get around this is honestly like, ironically, like downloadable content and stuff like that, right? Or like some kind of online feature. And that might be why a lot of games have it now. You know, like th things like battle passes, even in games that have no business having a battle pass, you know? Came one of the highest selling PC games of all time. So it's pretty hard for me to agree that piracy hurt them that bad. Yeah, you can't pirate microtransactions. The sequel exactly. Crisis Warhead launched with Secure ROM on it and was the last PC exclusive Crytek ever made. Here's where it gets interesting though. Half a decade later, in 2014, Crytek tried transitioning to the games as a service market. With the mm -hmm. CEO claiming that every game they'd make from then on would be free to play and always online. But this was after some underwhelming sales from Crisis 3 and Rise Son of Rome, a game I'm sure everybody remembers, which put the company on the brink of bankruptcy. To tell you how bad it got, Crytek reduced the size of their company by 40%. I wonder how much they make off of Hunt Showdown compared to their other games shut down all but two of their studios and sold off their rights to Homefront. The CEO also didn't pay employees for several months because they said it would have put the company under. A former Crytek employee that got in contact with me said the company was still tracking how many pirated copies of their games there were and still looked at piracy as a reason they weren't doing well. So they made the last ditch attempt to push into games as a service, which slowly clawed them back to profitability with games like Hunt Showdown. It's our game, guys. Our game. Now, we likely won't ever know the full behind-the-scenes story of Crytek, but I can guarantee this is a common belief in the industry. It's pretty easy to look at your sales numbers declining and blame people playing the game for free, even if it can't be proven that they- that, that is what he was saying earlier, is that the, the metrics might be some, from something else, right? Like, maybe your game just sucks. They'd have bought your game anyways. After all, no studio has shut down specifically because of piracy, and Crytek's numbers only really declined after they implemented DRM and started making console exclusives. Out of curiosity, have you got, do you guys know, are people pirating like Power World, for instance? Is Power World getting pirated? I'm, I'm so, curious to know how that is. These games were the ones yes. put in the end, and piracy is a very easy thing to blame for that. Also, an unrelated fun fact, in 2004, Crytek's offices were raided by German police for pirating software. Police didn't actually end up finding anything because it was a false alarm, so I just want to make that clear, but it is really funny. Now, this poor treatment of employees, or well, the Crytek CEO says that people were happy to not get paid, but I don't believe that for a second. Uh, this poor treatment of employees. Uh, <laughs> That's, what do you guys think, copium? That seems a little cope. That they were happy to not get paid? Get the fuck out of here. Is, ...is widespread. And as we've seen recently, often happens where piracy doesn't. 2023 was the worst year for game developers on record. Over one third of devs were laid off or knew someone who was, according to one survey. Included with those are Epic Games laying off 800 people, Niantic laying off 200, and of course, Microsoft recently letting go almost 2,000 people from places like Blizzard. There might just be too many people. You know, like, maybe they just don't need that many people. Over 6,000 people lost their jobs this past year, and notably, a decent chunk of them were from companies making highly profitable online games. Ones that don't get cracked or have massive piracy issues, yet still drop. I hate people citing tech layoffs in 2023 as a sign of something. I mean, it, it just seems like there's just too many people because like, uh, like a lot of uh, these companies, they, they bubbled up during 2020. And like, I just feel like they just 
they don't need that many people. Like, like for example, like Twitter, right? Didn't like Elon like fire like a shit ton of people at Twitter? It still works. Drop their employees like a sack of potatoes in order to cut costs. The reason for layoffs and shutdowns and poor working conditions are all going to be different. Like it still works, and there's a lot of like new features coming out. So like, I'm maybe they just the don't need that many people. However, Bobby Kotick left Activision Blizzard with a four. Because like, I, I mean. It's true that like there's a lot of times where these companies just have a lot of people doing nothing, you know? Hundred million dollars. It still works. That's debatable. I haven't had any problems with it. Are there problems that a lot of people are having with Twitter? I haven't had any problems with it. Or payout and Epic Games Tim Sweeney is worth four billion dollars. So that's kind of weird, right? When most Wait, what did he say? For Blizzard with a $400 million payout, uh -huh. and Epic Games' Tim Sweeney is worth $4 billion. So that's kind of weird, right? When most companies try to make a big stink about piracy and talk about all the money they're not making or all the employees that worked hard on their game, it can... Uh, Fastfield says, yeah, but even with it, uh, without it... One second. It happens a lot where like a, a small amount of people do like everything. Kind of ring hollow because even if their game isn't pirated, even if their game is massively successful, the most successful of all time, in fact, that company. Wait, what'd you say? Did you say, wait, 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 hold on. What? You see that Twitter has less freedom of speech now than before? Where are you getting that from? What the fuck? Isn't guaranteed to treat their employees any better. More revenue from piracy not happening wouldn't give those overworked devs job security. A union would. You know, there's assumption that what is piracy? Piracy is about people want to steal stuff from you, right? That they don't want to pay any money and they want to get your content. But when you look at the fact that these people have, you know, $2,000 PCs and they're spending $50 a month on their internet connections, clearly they're willing to spend money. So from our point of view, what we saw more and more is that piracy is the result Yeah, but they of have to spend money on that, you know? Service on the part this guy's a legend, by the way, like for real. Of, ...of game companies. So when you saw, attack the problem that way, by improving the service component of the experience, rather than through copy protection, which reduces the service component, you know, copy protection is actually going to increase. I mean, there's anecdotal evidence that this is the case, that copy protection actually increases rather than decreases okay. the privacy of games. So, like I say, by focusing on the customer and doing useful things for the customer, uh, piracy... The copy protection increases the piracy? I mean, I guess it... it... <laughs> It's probably what he's talking about, about how, about what the other guy was talking about with it being a worse product because of it. So that when the, the crackers get their hands on it, they remove that thing and then it becomes a better product. It really becomes sort of a non-issue for us. So why don't we switch from the most common reasons people will say piracy is evil to the main reasons people will say piracy can be a good thing. That being for emulation and games preservation. Emulation, yet again, is not piracy, even though tons of people who don't like it will be quick to call it that. Emulation is just the ability for a computer to act like a video game console and run games for that console. It is perfectly legal to do, and several lawsuits like Sony v. Connectix and Sony v. Bleem all ruled in favor of emulation. The lawsuits- Yo, Bleem, wasn't- Wasn't Bleem like that thing that like connected to the back of your, your PlayStation 1? Was that Bleem? Sega v. Accolade and Galoob Toys v. Nintendo even ruled that reverse engineering games- Galoob, Galoob was Game Genie. Galoob, Galoob v. Nintendo was Game Genie. Game cartridges and game consoles is legal, which became one of the few exemptions that the DMCA Act specifically- Which is like, uh, it was like the cheat, cheat program. Cheat, cheat programs that you, you connected like the cartridges to and then like you, you could- run run the game like through that thing yeah game shark exactly quickly allowed side note i do wish some of the i don't think galoob was game shark though companies involved in landmark emulation cases had better names than bleem or galoob but what can you do buying a game dumping its galoob was, onto was called game genie the computer loading the console's files into an emulator and then playing that game on the emulator is 100 a-okay 
no matter how much Sony and Nintendo wish it wasn't. Or rather, how much they wish it wasn't for other people, because official consoles like the NES Classic and PlayStation Classic are just emulators. And I mean, like, I kind of agree with this, where, like, if you buy... If you buy software, like you should be able to do whatever you want with it in terms of like you yourself. I, I, I don't I don't see how that that part is is a uh, is questionable really. As long as it's not like within the terms of cert like 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 when you're connecting like online to something. Cause like if if you have a software, right, and then you're afraid that you're gonna like break it, like you should be able to play it on your computer, I think. Even HD re-releases of games like Parappa the Rappa on PS4 were found to be running PSP emulators that just upscaled the game. So emulation is perfectly fine. See, like, I wonder, like, how this cheating, like, like, how is that involved in all of this? Like, I'm trying to think of, like, the... So you should be able to do whatever you want with the game, right? If you have it. But does that include modifying it for cheating? Hmm. Even the companies that put Connectix and Bleem into bankruptcy. Because I'm clearly, I'm lost. clearly like for you being able to like use a game genie for your own personal purposes. But like, what about using it for suits? Use it to sell their crappy little anniversary consoles. I see on servers that the developers are paying for. I see what you mean. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. When we talk about piracy That's a good in regards point. to emulation, it's just the same as every other kind. People who don't legally dump ROMs, but just go ahead and download them instead. And buying games to play on emulators legally is not a very easy task. That's actually a very interesting point. Like, if, if you own a game, say I own Pokemon Red, and I wanted, like, a copy on my computer... Is it okay for me to download that copy from someone else because I already have the game? Does that make sense? Rather than make the copy myself because I do not have the tools for it, you know? Are you allowed to, like, according to the law? It's legal, you guys said? Okay. Ask. If you want to buy the original version that makes of sense to me. than a couple console generations ago, you're probably... Oh, you need to make the copy yourself, says Luis. Julio says not really. Probably going to have to go through a third party like eBay, which means none of your money is going to the people who made the game. And that's if the game is even for sale, since as we saw with the closure of the Nintendo eShop, there are thousands of digital titles that are just gone forever, save for pirated copies. In recent years, there have been major talks about games preservation, and piracy is often the only way older titles can be preserved. Mm -hmm. Physical copies will degrade over time. Yep. Digital copies will be deleted from stores. Actually, I, I recently uh, watched a documentary about Nintendo 64 controllers. Did you guys know about all that shit? About how people are like having to like, not, I, I guess it wouldn't really be pirate, but like go against Nintendo's copyright and create their own N64 controllers because they're dying. Like all of the, the supplies of, of N64 controllers, like they're not, they don't make anymore. So like the supplies are dwindling and people are forced to like create their own. <laughs> It's actually really but cool. A it was a really cool documentary. Later can be shared and archived forever, which is especially helpful when the company behind that game doesn't want to or sometimes can't officially sell it anymore. Mm -hmm. God, just as I was writing this video, Spec Ops The Line got deleted from online storefronts. 2K says their license expired, so you just can't buy the game legally if you try. Oh, shoot. Oh, well. And this is a problem that goes beyond preservation and emulation for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I've been focusing on the US a lot here, but gaming in other countries is a whole different story. Just last year, Steam made changes to their pricing, which removed regional currencies from places like Argentina and Turkey. And so many developers just price their AAA titles the same as the US, at around 40 to 60 USD. The only problem being that those games Thanks, now Thanks for the bits. Thank you. the average monthly salary in those countries. Fuck. On top of that, most games rarely get support outside of major populated countries. Valve famously ported their games to Russia and saw major sales there, but they were an outlier and still kind of are. For a lot of people, pirating even new releases is the only way to realistically get them. 
unofficial translations being a large reason they even make it across a language barrier. Something anime fans are all probably familiar with, as fan translations are the only reason anime I have never pirated an anime episode. Not even one time. L I E S. Anime got popular I've never done it. in the West. I've never done it before. There's a common argument against piracy that says it only hurts people working hard to make games. But in this case, piracy can be the only way to get people to enjoy that hard work. It's the only way people can preserve that hard work and make sure it's remembered. And with people trying to shut down sites like the Internet Archive, the people fighting against piracy could be the reason we lose that hard work forever. Do, do you know, you know, though, without this whole thing? Honestly, like the 100% the, the honest truth is without being able to like actually like download, download anime, One Piece would be unwatchable. It'd be an actual unwatchable show because the Toei cut is fucking unbearable. Holy shit. No, not Crash Bandicoot. Piracy kills your hair. Dude, dude, this is so dramatic. This, this is whole so video dramatic. Has been Holy fuck. To make. You have no idea how many times I've gone back and rewritten sections of it to make better points or try to remove unnecessary fluff. I had whole long segments about copyright law and exemptions to it. I talked more about the early history of the cracking scene, but I just kind of realized that none of that really helped what I was saying. And I want the message of this video to be pretty clear. Being against piracy is easy. It's illegal. It hurts profits. It's stealing. That's it. That's all you have to say and you have the law, most companies, and many, many people on your side. It's a pretty safe and easy opinion to have, and I don't fault anyone for having it. Because he's like trying to make, he's trying to make like a, any reason, he's trying to make like a pragmatic argument. Almost always lands you with a mountain of arguments. You have to fight back on a bunch of misconceptions that are at best inaccurate and at worst straight up propaganda. And you have to deal with people trying to paint this issue as some sort of good versus evil debate. Even though I think the real answer here is that it isn't that black and white. You know, of course I want game devs to get paid more, and I want the games I like to make more money. Mm -hmm. I think if you like games and you have the cash, then you should support them and buy them. Obviously. I think I that's really what it all comes down to. Is that is that if you like if you like things and you want to see more things, like you should just support it. Right? It's kind of like what I do with anime. Like I just if I really like you know, Grand Blue Fantasy, for example, like I really like it. I'll sub I'll, I'll buy stuff from Grand Blue Fantasy. I'll buy the merch that they that they put out. Or like I'll 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 buy a, you know a lot of a lot of collectibles from like different animes that I like. Even have to say it because I don't think being pro piracy has to oppose those ideals. But if I'm gonna make some judgment on the morality of piracy, I want to make sure I'm talking about it truthfully. Mm -hmm. And the truth, as far as I see it, is this. Piracy is not theft. Copyright laws kind of suck. DRM sucks more. And I can get a better experience in some games through piracy because of it. Mm -hmm. Pirating games is the only way to preserve many of them. It's the only way some people can play most of them. And while it doesn't conclusively hurt profits, fighting against it has certainly hurt consumers. In fact, even if piracy didn't exist, game devs probably wouldn't get treated any better and mm -hmm. companies would just find another scapegoat to blame their problems on. But because it does, and it's not going anywhere, people around the world have gotten to enjoy amazing games. I'm sorry, but I just don't think piracy is that bad. Dude, that scared the shit out, dude, holy f I got fucking jump scared, dude. Holy sh- <sighs> You know, that was a pretty good video, actually. You know, I I, I think you know if if I were if I had to be honest, I, I I'd have to say it did it did change my mind on some things about piracy. I really I really think so. Like I, I mean, I agree with the general sentiment that like piracy does 
like like in some cases it it does remove money from devs that they are that i think they deserve but but then i, I think the pragmatic argument that like it, it you know here's the data here's the data and like this this doesn't work in fact it's like makes the, the pro the end product even shittier i mean that's that that all seems like it it tracks as well so i think i did kind of change my mind a little bit on it so that was a good video what do you guys think did, did you guys change your mind from it as well or well if pe people pirated our game well i mean that's why we're making our game free actually finish the video oh it's not over i thought it was over If I were a better YouTuber, I'd have bought an orange jumpsuit for this bit, but I'm not. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. I think this might be my most controversial video yet, and I've it's had people video. send me death threats over thumbnails I've made before. But who knows, maybe all of you agree with me and think I'm right. Either way, this is by no means a conclusive argument on the subject of piracy, mm -hmm. so if you have an opinion on it, feel free to share. As always, if you like the video and want to support the channel, you can drop a dollar to watch it and all my other ones uncut and ad-free over on Patreon. If you don't want to pay the dollar, uh, go pirate it somewhere. I don't care. <laughs> also, you can check out gamersups.gg slash to get 10% off some really great tasting energy drinks. Yeah, they pretty, are pretty good video. zero calories, and the company is willing to put their name on anything I make, so I always appreciate them. I've recently been enjoying the Jujutsu Kaisen Cursed Energy flavor a lot. I think it might be my favorite so far, and I got it in caffeine free so I can drink it while writing videos at two in the morning. Head to the link in the description or use code Lextorius at checkout to get some. It really does help the channel. Anyways, as you probably noticed, I have a new couch now. <laughs> Look at this thing, it's, it's great, it's so comfy. I like it. I ordered it back in like December and tried to get it for my last video but they completely fucked up the shipping. So it's here now. Dude, one time they, they fucked up the shipping on one of our couches and it came broken. So like the couch was actually broken, right? Like one of the beams was broken on it and they just sent us another couch. So we ended up with two couches cause we just fixed the other one. And I couldn't have bought something like this without everyone's support. Like, support on should Patreon we return it? And YouTube and nah, fucking like keep it. We're like, all right. In fact, after my Rule 34 video, the Patreon quintupled in size with over 1,000 new members. So the credits are probably scrolling by really fast. <laughs> with the couch, I hope to mark a shift in the channel where I'm going to make weirder, more creative videos. Oh, I like that. I've already seen with my bisexual city. I need like lots more weird videos because I'm not weird. And I need like the, I need like the not weird. I need the weird videos to balance out the fact that I'm not. Thing throughout this one. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Dis we need to watch the R34 video. Well, maybe we'll have Julio vet it first. And then if it's good, then we'll watch it next time. Uh, but yeah, on the topic of piracy, so that is like one issue that we ran into. So this is like my own personal story with piracy. So we're working on a game, a tabletop game, right? And we're all like Dungeons and Dragons players, right? But there was always like one person who like couldn't afford the books, right? We would all like get together and be like, okay, we're all going to play D&D. &D. And there was always like one or one or two people that like, ah, oh, I can't afford the books, man. I don't have them. Right, and like we wouldn't be able to play with them if it wasn't for the fact that the team that, that they did pirate it, right? Purposes. Like, like the fact that they. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, we wouldn't be able to play with them if if they didn't pirate it. So we understood that, like as you know, as tabletop gamers, and that's why when we're making our game, it's just going to be free. It's going to be just free, free to play. And then if people want to support us, they can just support our Patreon. That's kind of what we're doing. And if you support our Patreon, we just, like, give you new updates early and let you, like, have more feedback and insight into what's going on. You could, like, give your input into, like, what the next patch is going to have. But that, that, that's kind of our idea behind it. This is what we're just going to... We're just going to do, like, a Patreon... Uh, model for it yo future but thank you so much for the sub thank you for 22 months thank you but yeah i think i think this really did kind of change my mind on on some of the piracy stuff so that was a pretty good video it was pretty well presented um i i, I kind of agree that like you know the the general like in a perfect world 
in an absolutely perfect world we wouldn't have piracy right and that like any time like you you took something from you know you, you took something from a creator you know you would you would funnel some of that back to them but you know we don't live in a perfect world so you know the idea of making a product worse to account for the piracy is is terrible so